by food channel that is ours on that hashtag Thursday vibes as well as still why in the morning and this segment right now is an interesting segment where we talk about matter stick in short we shine the light on sport on tech so we invite uh, professionals who are savvy in the world of technology and many other it's a it's a it's a massive world that has so many opportunities and in as much as it's, it's a world that has opportunities it also has regulations and uh, today we feature a powerful gentleman who's a cyber security awareness psychologist uh, but maybe if I messed up here, clarify. He goes by the name David Moyapeng. He's live with us in the studio. Good morning, David. Welcome. Good morning. How are you? Thank you for having me this morning. Welcome to I in the Morning. <laughs> Great. Thank you so the much. Weather, the weather is really, oh, it's it's really crazy. It's <laughs> loving it out there in Nairobi City. Beautiful right. weather, beautiful energy, beautiful spirit. I'm loving it. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it, it's, it's so interesting to see like, uh, somebody who's foreign accept accept what's happening in that country really fast because most of the people they'll be like ah i don't like the weather but <laughs> thanks let me do what brought me here but i love the fact that you like it here welcome oh, to kenya thank yeah. you thank you so much all right so let's get to know you a little bit and how you got to have this title yes right um my name is david Mwepe. um i'm from botswana okay uh, but i'm here representing um an organization called the african cyber smart network Okay. which is a continental um, a program. Um, I am a cyber psychologist by profession, but I work as a cyber security awareness specialist. I know there's just too many terms to right. <laughs> I work as a cyber security awareness specialist. Awareness specialist. specialist. What does okay. that mean? Uh -huh. We promote cyber security awareness. We promote online safety. Okay. Um, as a society, global society, African society, even the Kenyan society, Increasingly, we are becoming digitalized. Um, the use of digital technology is now a part of you know our everyday life. You know, right. it's part of our social lives, and it's, it's, it's now you know getting into our cultures, our practices, our traditions. Um, and you know that with technology, as much as it is a useful tool, um, they uh, you know security threats, there are safety threats that emerged. Um, out of you know our interaction, our engagement through technology, in technology, and uh, it is increasingly becoming vital. It's becoming important that um, people are taught how to use technology safely and meaningfully, so as to reap the right. full benefits of what technology can do. You know, when you have your phone, you have yep. your internet, you can do amazing things. You know, children can go to school online, even, you know, as adults, we can go to school online. We right. can do business online. You can do so many things online. Right. But if there are hindrances to that, imagine what, what, what that means, because you know, right. that means even the economies are not benefiting uh, right. from the global digital, you know, economy. So there's a lot that we can benefit from. Um, technology and that needs to be safeguarded by all means and you know cybersecurity uh, experts always talk about the weakest link uh, online in terms yeah. of you know security being you know the end user the user right. me and you you know right. uh, yeah. and mainly is because of our behaviors you know we don't use strong passwords we yeah. log into um, you know our websites that are not safe that are not secure you know, yeah. you are, you're, you're a businessman, you want to order goods, you don't, you know, just check before you even order goods from overseas, you know, yeah. you end up being scammed, you know, you, exactly. there's, a, there's a lot of phishing scams going on online, somebody sends you an email, somebody sends you a text, you know, they say, you know, you have won, you know, a million you shillings, 10, and then you're dollars. excited, <laughs> you know. And then click on this link. And then you click <laughs> on this link, you know, there's a lot of identity theft going in there, right. you know, so, you know, the more that happens, I mean, Interpol just a week ago released a statement uh -huh. that says Africa um, uh, is experiencing a proliferation of cyber crime. That means, you know, uh, a lot of us, you know, internet <laughs> users are becoming victim to cyber crime. And yeah. when you become victim to something, you tend to withdraw. And that's not what we want. We want Africans to engage. Uh, with technology, through technology, and reap the full benefits of technology. But how best can we do that? By making sure that we teach them about safe, responsible, and meaningful use of the internet uh, and digital technology as a whole, so as to reap the full benefits. So as cybersecurity awareness specialists, that what, that's what we do. You know, right. Teaching society, teaching communities, right. different groups of society. Um, we have uh, programs that, you know, uh, we're through which we go to rural areas and teach the elderly 
and right. teach. You know, um, out of school youth, uh, we have programs where we go to schools. We have programs for uh, the girl child. Right. Programs that are specifically designed for a girl child for women. because yeah. they are, you know, uh, they are in, they are a lot more vulnerable uh, right. online as compared to the boy child because you know a thirteen year old girl as soon as they open a Facebook account or Twitter account they automatically become a target to you know uh, yeah. uh, predators and things like that. So yeah. basically that's what we do and um, we have a lot of these organizations in different countries, yeah. uh, even in Kenya that okay. promote cyber security that teach you know society about online safety. So we have created this network, the African Cyber Smart Network, so that we can collaborate and do and, and run programs together because you know what we like to say in Africa, you know, we, we're really one place. Yeah. You know, our challenges <laughs> are the same. Yeah. The solutions have to be the same. So we have to work together. Right. Yeah, so that's basically what the African Cyber Smart uh, Network is all about, and that's what I do. Right. Interesting. Really comprehensive. <laughs> um, um, you've also reminded me uh, our country just launched uh, the, those, those a move to ensure that women, especially women in tech, and they're calling it women in tech or tech women, to be safeguarded because. Uh, it recently there's been a lot of trolling like you realize uh, our, our, our woman who is in leadership they call them women in leadership as well yeah. they're being told maybe because of their appearance and uh, you know what they do and you know in a world where you know it's a modern day world where now women are taking up roles similar to men it becomes really hard to actually exist in that space but then uh, i was looking at it why not just have a balance now also why can't we also extend the same to the other side yes absolutely right yeah so basically what we do as um, cyber security awareness specialists, um, yes, we help victims, but we also, you know, um, sensitize those that may be perpetrators. Okay. You, know, um, you know, generally there's a lot of excitement, you know, <laughs> in Africa, but around the world because, yeah. you know, technology gives you so much power. You can do so much. You can be yeah. wherever and say whatever you want to do. And it gives you so much freedom as well. Uh, but so we are teaching um, everyone to make sure that they exercise their freedoms responsibly, you know, uh -huh. so do not bully others, do not um, harass others online, because, you know, it could be you, it could be your daughter next time, it could be yeah. your son, it could be somebody related to you, so think about that, you know, before you go out and, you know, insult someone online um, and, and, you know, get engaged in this trolling that is taking place online, you know, think about the consequences, think about you know the effect of your actions on the other person because right. we have you know incidents where you know especially young people adolescents that have taken their lives because they were bullied online right. because um cyber bullying trolling cyber stalking cyber harassment in general it can lead to you know um suicide. It can yeah, yeah suicide it can affect one's mental health um and so as cyber psychologists that's what we do to teach um, you know, internet users about, you know, um, responsible conduct online so that you do not become a perpetrator. At the same time that we are teaching people to deal with this, you know, negative effects of inappropriate use of the internet, we also sensitize uh, the perpetrators to desist uh, from using technology to abuse others no. um, and, and do all sorts of things. And, you know, we are Africans, you know, it happens a lot just because you have the internet and you can say whatever you want to say. You know, some of these people that are in politics, they are you know, they're elders. You know, in Africa, we have the spirit of Ubuntu, you know. Nah. You know, on the streets, you don't go around, you, right. know, you know, insulting people or seeing politicians, whether they're female or male, nah. mm -hmm. and, you know, hurling insults at them. Why should we do it online? Right. You understand? So these right. are the, some of the things that we really sensitize society on. Wow, interesting. Now, let's, for example, in a company set up like us here or any other company outside, uh, how can you you know, inform them of what we are talking about. For example, they're sharing a network and uh, there's a lot of networking, like maybe let's say a center network where I log in, somebody else has logs in. And then after some time, um, you realize the network is down and they say our network was hacked. And then um, within a short period of time, you hear the information about that company is on another blog or somebody else in another country did it. So how can we sensitize companies on that and maybe are there some of the measures also from a professional perspective do you offer their packages that you're offering companies even as well as individuals on the yes. other side yes absolutely um we do that mm -hmm. so um in different african countries there are specialists who offer those those services that um, are, are part of the network 
and 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 basically what we are what we are doing also is to you know with technology uh, previously cybersecurity was just an area that you know people thought you know this is just for IT guys you know the yeah. guys that work in the IT department have to worry about that but we live in an era where you know from the security um, uh, 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 officer at the gate the, yeah. the cleaner the receptionist everybody in an organization is using a device that is connected to the a network, network or a system right yeah. so um, so even when it comes to training members of staff do not leave we tell them not to leave anyone out don't think no that one is just at the gate is a security officer so let's not worry about them let's just focus on training and sensitizing our IT guys no everybody in the organization need to be taught on how to use the internet safely need to be sensitized about online security threats as long as they have a phone and they use the network because what can happen is somebody can send them a link they click on that link right and yeah. that link leads them to a website somewhere um, that is um, that has that has um, a ransom not ransomware malware right yeah. and that malware is what um, hackers use to hack um, organizations, networks, um, systems, and computers, right? right? And then that's how then we have a ransomware. Um, you know, uh, law enforcement officers are telling us on a daily basis that there's an increase in incidence of ransomware. How do those things happen? Right. It starts with a, with a link sent to whether it's your WhatsApp, whether it's your email, and you just yeah. open it without thinking about, you know, um, the consequences, and you don't even know where the link came from. And yeah. that link leads to a website that has malware. That malware then um, enables the hackers to uh, lock into the system and um, get your details. And get your details, and even right. lock you out yourself, <laughs> the user. Right. And then yeah. they take over the system and they say, "Give us money, or yeah. else we are not giving you your data." So that's that's basically what cybersecurity um, awareness, online safety um, awareness is all about. Making sure that everybody, whether it's an organization, uh, whether it's a school. Everybody is sensitized, everybody is taught about safe um, use of the internet so as they can, it's just, it's just not about their own protection, it's about the protection of everybody in the organization, the organization's digital assets, networks, systems, uh, data and everything that's in there. Right, interesting. And now, from an individual's perspective, at least if you are a student, I'm sure at some point, you know, you went into a cyber cafe, logged in into uh, a device, and you browsed online or did a research and printed using your email, of course, your info. Now, how safe am I logging into a cyber cafe in town just down the street, logging in, checking something online, and then I leave? What is happening at the back end of... Uh, uh, some of this software is being used to run these computers because, first of all, I don't even know the owner. I don't even know what he does, but he has a cyber cafe business. But here I am, I'm, I need a cyber cafe to browse online. How safe is my password and my details when it comes to using, you know, such um, equipment? Yes, that's, that's, that's why we, we encourage users to use strong passwords, but also okay. uh, to uh, change their passwords regularly. Because, yeah. you know, you go into an internet cafe, you don't even know who was there before you. You don't right. know which websites they, they, <laughs> they visited, into, you know, right. they locked into. And you right. don't even know, like you said, you don't know uh, who's managing the network and, and what they have installed in those computers. You know, and one of the things that we do actually is to discourage um, users from, uh, you know, locking into their online banking platforms using... Uh, open Wi-Fi networks using exactly using, <laughs> open using, Wi-Fi yeah networks, using yeah. Um, internet cafes uh, right. because some of these computers could be installed with malware that mines passwords right and, you know you 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 log in you put in your password there is a there is a there is a there's a trojan that has been installed in there there's malware in there that then you know just grabs your password and next thing you see your money just disappearing from your bank account yeah. without without knowing how that happened but it's just some of these small things that you know we keep talking to people about on a daily basis we're seeing Online safety should become part of your, you know, your, 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 your daily life. Your daily life. Right. You know, the same way you leave your house in the morning, you know you have to lock your house. You know right. you have to close all the windows. You know? Yeah. you know you have to make sure that your wallet is somewhere where it's safe. You know, um, you cross the road, you walk 
around in the city, you make sure that you don't just cross the road. You look to the right, you look to the left, and all those things. Um, so what um, we do as cybersecurity awareness specialists is to make sure that we get these messages out on right. a regular basis, talking to people on a daily basis to say, hey, you know, and here, here's the thing also that what's happening online. Yeah. You know, the threat landscape evolves. So on a daily basis, there's new threats that are emerging. So right. just as on a daily basis, there's a new platform, there's new this, there's new this on a daily basis, you are learning about all these, you know, um, the, you know, platforms that are coming up that are being created. Now we're talking about AI, you know. Right. Uh, the How chat GPTs, the chat of, the GPTs of the day yeah. and all those things. How do we make sure that we just don't get excited and just jump into these things without you know, thinking about the, um, the consequences, the, uh, the safety uh, implications, um, the security implications of these platforms? Uh, it has reminded me of uh, recently we've seen in our country there's been a lot of, <laughs> I'll say, private photos that were taken in private now being unleashed in the public, especially for celebrities. And uh, I, I was really asking myself, what is going on to a point, you know, you had, you had a relationship with someone, and uh, I'm using that example because this is a person who is in a relationship, yes, yeah. he's in the public domain, but uh, the photos that they took uh, that were meant for private consumption, here they are on a blog, they're being shared on WhatsApp, they're still on Instagram, and now they're viral. How can you protect, you know, such a person? Because that's already cyberbullying. Yes. And uh, of course, maybe this person said they tried to threaten him and tell him, if you can't give me, you know, 100K, I'm going to post these photos. Why is it not possible for us to have like maybe, um, I'll say like a regulator app or yeah. a regulator software where it prevents someone from leaking uh, private photos of another person without their consent? I think online consent should be there. Is it possible to have that? Yeah, you see, some of these things happen during the good times, you know, and you know, uh, people share, you know, their images willingly because mm -hmm. maybe, you know, they're still in a relationship and life is good. Um, you know, uh, it, it's happening a lot where we are seeing an increase in, um, you know, cases of extortion, um, revenge porn. Yes, revenge where, porn. Yeah, where exactly. people have shared, you know, uh, videos of themselves, um, you know, uh, 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 and in bid to hurt the other person. <laughs> yeah, yes. Or to trigger a mental health, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you know? I mean, you know, there's so many incidents that we're dealing with on a daily basis. People are sending us, you know, messages. Can you please help me? Um, yeah. You know, there's this person, I shared this video, I did this, I did that. And also yeah. what's happening is um, even the scammers, the scammers are very smart nowadays. You yeah. know, so what they In do... In fact, most of them are IT experts. <laughs> yeah, most of them, yeah. So what they do is... Uh, you know, so they sent um, requests to, you know, especially uh, what's it's happening to a lot of women. So they, yeah. they you know, they, they send them friends requests and then they start, you know, uh, befriending them and mm. then the Saying online we can relationship debt, begins. I can send you money. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. and then they trick them into sending them, you yeah. know, um, videos of themselves in compromising positions and stuff like that. And then once they have those videos, they use those videos uh, to extort money. Uh, right. from their victims and things like that. So it, it, it's very difficult to, to regulate it uh, because some of the images are shared by people willingly. You know, it's just that the other person then, when things go sour, then the other person uses it uh, in a way that... As uh, a weapon. Can, uh, yeah, <laughs> as a weapon, right? Um, yeah. But it's just to teach people to say, be cautious, be careful who you share your videos with. You know, in terms of how you manage your device also, you know, we want to enjoy the freedom of using our devices the way we wish or the way we want to use them. You know, yeah, take videos of ourselves, you know, doing whatever it is that we want to do. But what you should ensure you do at all times is make sure that your device is always locked. Make sure that you don't share your content, even your, even your pictures, you know, the right. gallery, you can lock pictures, you can lock the gallery, you can store pictures somewhere where nobody can access them except you. Um, you know, be cautious who you are sharing your pictures, your images, your videos with. And what has been happening actually, we've seen people sharing with strangers just because we meet online. Yeah, I know it's nice. We want to be like the guys, you know, overseas, you know, yeah. online relationships, online dating, <laughs> get right. into that. Which is actually taking over the world by storm. We are also embracing it here. Tinder is here. And Tinder the rest, is here you know, and all that. But you even don't know if this is a genie or it's a <laughs> ghost or it's a real person. Yeah. But, you know about you know. the t Tinder swindler? Right, exactly. Those are real exactly. life stories. Exactly. You know, yeah. that is not just some movie somewhere. No, no, no. Those are yeah. real life 
incidents, people getting tricked into these blackmail, yeah. blackmail, and all that. So, but what we are saying is, think about it. Do you know this person? Do you trust this person? Right? right before you share before you even share a number because <laughs> like you said there's a lot of excitement somebody's meeting somebody new online they'll be like yeah. i'm so excited it's a celeb let me just give them my number within a short time your details are gone and you're wondering what possibly wrong could i have done you know? absolutely and and online safety can even help you with your physical safety these incidents right. where people have met online and because you know people were not cautious online then it leads to, hey, can we meet? You know, right. then when they meet in real life, the worst happens. The worst can happen. Actually, it has happened. I mean, in Botswana, there was an incident of a girl who was murdered by a guy. This guy had been in jail before for murder. So that was a right. murderer, right? Right. So, one. so <laughs> the girl sees a, you know, handsome, you know, pro the profile picture looks very nice because you know how we present ourselves of online. Course. We make sure that <laughs> the profile picture. Online ID. <laughs> right? So they, right. you know, so she likes the profile picture, right? right? So when they meet in real life, She's like, no, oh, no, you, you know, know the, same to Tinder. Like, are yeah. you are you the same Chris you Brown same? I saw on Tinder? How comes yeah. you? Are, how comes you're darker than the Chris Brown Absolutely. I saw on Tinder? Yeah, you then know? the guy is like, you know what? You 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 you're playing. I traveled 500 kilometers to come and meet with you. You can't tell me that. And then right. the guy got pissed off, and then he killed her. Now oh, you nice. see, if she had been cautious, right, online at the beginning. And that's right. what online safety is all about. All about yeah. If she had been cautious at the beginning, she wouldn't have ended up being murdered. By a stranger. By a stranger. Mm. She allowed herself into that situation because she did not take precaution right. online. So anything can happen. Right. Whether it's, it ends up in murder, whether it ends up in money being lost, you know, people being scammed, uh, data right. being lost, you know, computers being hacked, uh, systems being hacked it ends up with our, you know, psychology, our psychological, you know, our thinking, you know, in terms right. of, you know, when we receive these things, when we find ourselves in these positions, you know, we should ask ourselves questions, you know, um, am I sure about what I'm about to do? Right. How safe is this? Right. Have I ticked all the safety boxes? Right. And that's what, what do I know? Even sometimes, and you also reminded me, when you're logging into an app uh, or trying to download the app for the first time and use it, there's usually that user, user interface uh, yes. precaution as well. Like, we don't read that. Like, <laughs> what are some of the terms and conditions of using this app? For us, you want to go to Play Store Just or accept, App Store, accept. accept, install, you're logging in. You know, they've given you disclaimers. There's, there's people who've also been suspended out of, you know, abusing, you know, some social media platforms because yeah. you never read the terms and conditions and here you are. Yes, you know? absolutely. Um, and, and, and now, even with our children, exactly. you know, we, we have Wi-Fi connections at our homes. We buy our children, you know, tablets. They play games. They watch videos on YouTube, you know. Um, so if we don't teach children from the beginning at a very early um, stage about online safety. So you can imagine, children are still young, they haven't learned much about, you know, what's wrong and what's right, you know, what could happen and the consequences yeah. of their actions. So really it's also to, you know, make sure that parents at home, it has to start at home. And when we say online safety should be part and parcel of our everyday life, we even yeah. meet, we, need, we mean at home, you know, in the morning, you know, parents talking to their children, okay, you know what your child is doing online, you know what websites they are visiting, and you know, right. you teach them where to go, where not to go. You know, um, they, these, 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 these games like Roblox, I, I don't know if you know about Roblox. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is a game where children can play with other kids, you know, from wherever, you know. They could be here in Kenya playing with other kids in China, you know. Right. And what happens is uh, predators actually use these games. You right. know, they create profiles and, 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 and pretend to be kids. Right. So as to you manipulate know, kids manipulate and kids and, and get access down. to other kids, and you know, right. a girl will and be that here. That is child trafficking again. We, 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 uh, I, I don't mind if you talk about that as well. Like, how can cybersecurity awareness be used to curb uh, child trafficking? Because it's, it's it's happened a lot, of course, overseas as compared. I don't think if it's much in Africa though. Yeah. But uh, how can we curb that using cybersecurity awareness? Yeah. 
I, I think in Africa, not so much child trafficking, but human trafficking is human happening. Trafficking you know, in general. you yeah. know, in Africa, we are looking for opportunities overseas. We're looking for jobs overseas. <laughs> we are we're, dying to go. We're to dying to go overseas, <laughs> right? So we go online, and there, you know, these fake websites, yeah. you know, and we're promised jobs. Um, yeah. You know, it happened here in Kenya. You know, uh, there were guys um, in, in 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 Dubai, in Saudi uh, Arabia, in Saudi yeah. Arabia who ended up in, you know, horrible situations because they thought, they were excited, like, oh, I got a job in yeah. Saudi Arabia. But and my flight is fully paid and accommodation, you know. Only to go there, they are feeding yeah. a dog. So <laughs> it's the same as yeah. what we were talking about earlier in terms of, you know, when you find yourself in a position where you are trafficked, right. you know, um, that means what you should do is at the beginning, you know, are you sure? Is this a legitimate you know, um, recruiting firm, who are these guys, you know? Um, if you have to call someone, ask them, have they, you know, worked with anybody in Kenya? Um, you know, do they have any people that they have, you know, hired in Kenya? Um, can they give you their numbers so you can call and, and verify these things? Verification online right. is key nowadays for your safety, uh, for the safety of your digital assets. You know, just make sure that you tick all the boxes. Uh, so that you don't end up in, 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 in horrible situations. I mean, you know, we, are, we have Africans losing money to fraudulent universities, you know, right. because now, you know, technology enables us to study online. Yeah, online you know, you want courses. to get your... You Short want, courses. Yeah, yeah, you want to get your, your master's in, in two minutes. They'll right. promise you... That in you Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Harvard? In one month? And they have a master's? <laughs> Let me sign up very fast and pay the money. Yeah, you know? so... Yeah. Online safety is all about the basics. All right. When, when you walk out of this building, you know, you, you, Africans generally, we are cautious. You know, who's this guy? What do they want? You know, right, even yeah. when somebody comes to you and says, hey, my brother, uh, I just wanted to ask, what time is it? For direction. You, for directions. <laughs> and that's you know? it. You're yeah. already clutching yeah. your bag. Hey, yeah, like, this guy, who's up, this guy? <laughs> you know, you check your wallet, Checking you check yourself. everything. Yeah. You know, where is this guy coming to me uh, and asking for directions or even time? Right. So, but when he gets, when we go online, we, we don't forget. We, we forget do those that, things. You know? like, oh, this guy Why says, country extend yeah. the same online? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this guy says he has, you know, um, ten million US dollars stored somewhere in a Swiss bank account, and they want to send it to my bank account. Why? But me? I have to send them twenty thousand dollars for <laughs> them to send me. Like, oh, you know? what is this business? <laughs> you know? really so you see these things. Yeah. So, so that's what online safety is all about. We are saying, guys, it's it's very simple. It's about the basics. Right. Is about the basics, making sure that you ask yourself these questions. You know, you are very cautious before you act. You know, verify. Um, right. You know, teach your children about online safety. You know, in an organization, teach your staff about online safety. Um, in in our society, in our communities, make sure that you know online safety becomes part and parcel of our everyday lives, just like road safety. You know, we have, you know, in every, in every government, there's a department of transport. In every country, there's a department of transport. And right. they do, you know, road safety awareness campaigns and things like that. You know, and that's what we are trying to do, to say, you know, technology is now part of our everyday lives. It's part of our social lives. You know, um, online safety should also be, you know, integral in our, you know, um, education systems at schools. It should be in, in, incorporated, integrated into our curriculums. Um, and children taught about online safety from an early stage uh, so that they don't bully others. You know, children right. are suffering from, you know, online bullying. They're excited because they can do whatever, you know, without thinking about the consequences. Or because there's nobody out there to say, you know what, I'll make sure that I give you one or two right. <laughs> whips, you know. So that's what uh, that. we are trying to do there. Interesting. Uh, there's this story that captured my, my eye. Uh, uh, it, I think it's UK trying to ban TikTok and they, uh, they gave their reasons why they don't want TikTok to be there. And then also the US partly, I think it was in San Francisco, where uh, one of the leaders came out and said, we don't want TikTok to be used in our country anymore. And uh, uh, one of the defense lawyers said, we can't ban TikTok now because we feel like it's an app a lot of people are using to express themselves when it comes to content creation. Especially overseas, now you can earn money from TikTok, not yeah. as much as in Kenya, because in Kenya you have to do endorsements now. In those other countries, they are making money out of it. Is there something that they know that perhaps we also need to know right here in Kenya? Yeah. <laughs> you see, what is happening with TikTok? Um, the US government has banned the use of TikTok in government facilities. Canada right. has done the same, and I think some countries in Europe as well. 
it's more of a national security issue than it is a cyber security issue because right. TikTok is, um, you know, Chinese owned and the concerns uh, from um, Western countries are that, um, you know, in China, you know, um, companies are subjected to regulations that require them to disclose, you know, information to Chinese authorities whenever there's a need for such to happen. On the app. On the app, yeah. you know. So obviously TikTok being a Chinese-owned company would have to do that. You right. know? So the U.S. government and all these other governments are concerned about is if we allow our you know, information to be on TikTok, that means chances of that information ending up in the hands of Chinese authorities are high because TikTok as a Chinese-owned company is subjected to requirements in China to right. disclose whatever it is that the Chinese government may need at whatever time. So that's really what the issue is all about, right. uh, more than it is a, a cybersecurity issue. So yes, right. I mean, obviously, this, it's TikTok is, 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 is growing. Um, it, there's phenomenal growth with TikTok now uptake all around right. the world, but it's, it's just about national security. Right, and I'm sure data privacy and management comes in. <sighs> You know, you can yeah, think about that as well. You know, data privacy is one of the things that, you know, um, cybersecurity covers. Nice. To say, you know, we, we put our data, you know, we, we store our data online. Uh, and, you know, we don't know who's, 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 who's in charge of this data and what they can use it for, right? right? So what countries are doing is they're c coming up with data uh, protection um, regulations, right. uh, data protection laws, right. so as to, you know, safeguard the privacy of, you know your ordinary users, internet yeah. users because right. you know it could be it could be a Facebook it could be a Twitter you know they are storing that data wherever they are storing it and they are using that data however they are using it and we have no control because like you said earlier you know we look at the terms and then we're like this is too long you just say accept yeah. you know but maybe in in those in those condi in those terms of condition and conditions Twitter says you know what we will use your data we'll share your data with third parties but they, right. they do that anyway you know right. like for instance if you start searching for something on Google right Right. Automatically, you start seeing the ads if you start se uh, searching for, let's say, holiday destinations. When right. you go on Facebook, you start seeing, because the algorithms are linked, you start seeing ads about right. holiday destinations. destinations yeah. Did I tell Google to share my data with... I did because, you know, when you know all those cookies, accept cookies, accept cookies. No cookies That's yeah. how we do it. And once you accept, you, you ensure you've given them your full data. I've told them that do whatever, you know, you track want, me. You know however you want and use whatever that data, however you want to use it. Right, interesting. Is there maybe uh, some of the measures that especially from your end where you sit that you guys have brought on the table and now since you're in Kenya and you said it's a very short visit, are there maybe partnerships? Are you guys having talks with the government to ensure that there's measures that will also help Kenyans to stay safer online? Yes, uh, basically as the African Cyber Smart Network, um, we are made up of organizations in different countries that um, already work with governments in those countries uh, to you know run programs uh, for um, the public for society on online safety um, we are currently gathering um, in Kenya attending the digital rights and inclusion forum where right. we are discussing ways through which we can you know um, enhance intensify um, you know, the advancement of digital rights, the protection of society online, um, you know, so in every country, so we have representatives coming from different countries who are gathering to discuss ways through which we can work together right. um, to address this, 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 this matters and help um, Africans stay safe online. Right. And also enjoy their rights, enjoy their freedoms online. Right. Yes. And I love the fact that also nowadays now, uh, I think it's on Spotify or uh, iTunes, yeah. where they're trying to actually customize, like if it's African music, it has an African icon, like yes. it's relatable to Africans, you know, trying to like give them some sort of online identity. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, um, Africa is a huge market. I mean, close to a billion uh, people and these tech companies are looking to Africa for growth. Um, and also because you know, our internet penetration uh, is still low, but it's growing fast. Right. So if you are a, a U.S. tech company and you want to grow because growth has stagnated in, yeah. in, in, in these large markets and you want to grow, you focus on Africa. Um, you create products for Africa, and that's why they are doing that. 
Right. You had, you, you had earlier on mentioned identity theft, and uh, I, 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 I thought of uh, a friend whose Instagram account was hacked, and then all of a sudden they're seeing this person posting about Forex, you know, trading. Uh, what could have possibly have happened? And then this person is again texting and messaging all the people that he was interacting with in, yeah. the, in the DMs. What could have possibly happened, and what can he do to solve that? Yeah. Because this person is abusing his identity online, and that again uh, it comes to digital footprints. Yeah, there's a lot of identity theft happening um, um, online in Africa, um, especially on Facebook, um, Instagram, um, as, well, as well as Twitter. Yeah. And how it happens is we, you know, we click on links from strangers that we don't know where they come from. And remember, most of us you know, already save our passwords. We save our passwords on our devices, right? Right. So our passwords are stored somewhere on our devices. So where should we sell them now? Because <laughs> I believe they should be there. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. But you need, there are password managers that are secure. Right. And most of us don't use password managers that are secure. So you, right. you, you just, because you know, some of these platforms, you just say, remember my password. You click remember yeah. my password, it's good. You think Facebook you're Facebook will remember your password. But right. what then happens is, um, then you receive a link from a stranger. You click on that link. That link leads to a website that is installed with a malware. That right. malware is then, then you know, mines your passwords. And then or it, it asks for your email to yeah, log in again. To log, yeah, uh -huh. So that with happens. Well. Yeah. yeah. Then the person who's, who's, who sent you that link right. then is able to access your, your accounts. Right. And then that's how identity theft happens. Then they click into your then they, then they hack your accounts and then they take over your accounts. Also, how identity theft happens is, I mean, you know, and this is happening. They can just mo look at your account. We share a lot. Of, you know, you go on Facebook and you find that everything is open, even to strangers. Simple things like, you know, where you post pictures showing off, wherever you are, you know, enjoying life, going on, you know. Getting lit. <laughs> yeah. That's getting, the word. We're yeah, getting lit. Today. Getting lit. Absolutely. <laughs> so what then yeah. happens is I can look at your account and right. then create another account a using your one. name. Yeah, yeah, a pseudo account using your name. I already have access to your pictures, right? right. Because I can just, you know, you, you left everything open. Anybody can just go online, go onto your account, and then scroll through and see all your pictures. So I can just take your Screenshot pictures. Screenshot them or save them. Just take pictures, save them, save them, and then create a, an account. Right. And then I just check who are, these, who, who are his friends. And then I start sending your friends um, Messages. Messages yeah. and say, I'm stuck somewhere. I need, I need 10K. I need 10K. <laughs> I need Agent. this. I need that. <laughs> I need this. You know? Or, and right. using your account to, there's a lot of um, Bitcoin scamming that is happening as well. You know? Exactly, yeah. And using Bitcoin your account. And Forex to, trade. Yeah, and yeah. Forex trading. And yeah. then I'll use your account to scam people. Remember, I took a lot of data, a lot of content from you. So I've created a profile that looks genuine. Right. Because this profile has a lot of pictures. Surely when somebody looks at it, it's like, no. Even followers be. as well. Like and even followers. And yeah. even followers. So what we advise people to do is, you know, it was nice at the beginning, you know, going on social media and having 5,000 friends. Right. But make sure that the, f the people that are your friends on social media are people that you know, you know, right. the people that you trust. Or what you do, yes, you want to use social media also to grow your network, right? That is right. fine. But what you should do is make sure that you, you, can, you can set um, your every picture, everything that you post to, you know, you can set it to say, no, this should be seen by this person and shouldn't be seen right. by anybody else. Like you restrict people. You restrict access, yeah. I think this for Instagram a lot where you are allowed to restrict a person who should view a status and who should not, who yes. should message you and who should not. Even WhatsApp nowadays, you're able to make your status private. Yes, absolutely. Right. So that's what we advise people to do. Restrict access. Make sure that you only give access to people that you know and trust. Right. right. Now, um, as we come to the close, uh, when it comes to now parent, uh, parents in the household, you had mentioned that earlier on though. But you know, the kids of nowadays, <laughs> everybody wants to at least be on social media. You will see a kid as, as early as five years. In other countries, like I'm sure, like the U.S., uh, at five years, they, they already bought them like uh, mm. a mobile gadget, uh, a gadget that they can access thing. games, they can talk to other friends as well. Now, when it comes to regulating, especially now in Kenya, what should the parents consider? Even also, also when it comes to programming for TV, 
And now that we have smart TV where kids can log into Netflix, you know, have those passwords, watch some programs, is there something that, you know, should be considered or should be put in place to ensure that, you know, parents in Kenya are filtering what their kids are consuming in terms of also programming, in terms of the games and whatnot? Yeah, um, I mean, apart from parental controls that are in, you know, most of these platforms, you know, it requires a lot from us now, uh, parents in this area, <laughs> you know? That means you need to be actively involved in your child's technology use on a regular basis, you know, monitoring, you know, what, what, they, what websites they are visiting, what they are consuming online. But the most e effective measure really is about, you know, teaching them the values. You know, when we were growing up as children, yes, we were playing on the streets, but we knew our parents would talk to us about, you know, when you're out there on the streets, you know, this is how you conduct yourself. Um, so you, you came home with those values and, and, and it should work the same way online. You know, it's just that, you know, we, most parents, we're also busy, you know, with technology on a daily yeah. basis. You get into a house, you find that the mom is busy there on their phone, the dad is the busy dad there on the laptop, laptop. <laughs> the child the is busy there, the kids are busy tubs, there, some are you know. in their rooms lock right. themselves in the room, they only come out to go to the kitchen to grab something to eat and then right. go they back, go you know. The whole day. Yeah. So it requires a lot from us now as parents in this era to get engaged, to get involved because there's a we lot happening on. online. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be hands-on on a regular basis because if you're not, if you don't teach them those values, if you don't instill those values in them, you know, you can imagine, you know, when they go online, they're getting influences from all over the world. Yeah. You know, back in the days, you know, our parents only worried about, you know, whatever influences that we could get from with the our street. Peers. <laughs> with our <laughs> peers. Now, you now know. Now it's uh, online. Now it's online. And Your it's child goes online. Yeah. They're getting influences from Australia, from China, from America, from the UK. Right. You know, so it really requires a lot from us as parents to really be engaged, be involved on a regular basis. But now I'm, I'm also thinking from a parent who is not tech savvy. <laughs> For example, they're from the rural areas yeah. and here they are exposed to these devices. Here there's a smart TV, here's an iPhone, here's a tablet and a laptop. How, how, how can they get that information very fast and then become tech savvy? Because it, it also includes learning. Like we need to learn together and walk this journey together to a point we are now you know, united. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, in other countries like China, for instance, I've seen they have a program uh, for the elderly, um, cyber security skills for the elderly, where they teach, you know, the elderly about cyber security awareness. Um, in Botswana, we have a program called Cyber Smart Champions. So what we right. do is we go to communities. Um, we want to get the message out at a community level in rural areas. So we set up cyber clubs. And right. then these cyber clubs are made up of young people who are tech savvy, who then go out into their communities to teach, you know, the elderly children, you know, just members of their communities about online safety. You know, um, it, we've gotten to a point where, you know, I remember when HIV AIDS first, you know, um, came out, you know, yeah. you know, countries were very aggressive to make sure that there's education, public education, yeah. um, sex education at schools. Um, so we've gotten to a point where we need to do it. We need to tackle cybersecurity. Um, in that manner, where right. we make sure that from a com because governments are taking services online, you know, we have, um, you know, the elderly people calling us to say, you know, I, I've never used an email. Now I want yeah. to check how far they are with processing my pension, and they're telling me that I should send them an email. Where do I start? Right. You know, things like that, you know. So I'm trying to call. Then they are saying they don't process, you know, claims through phone. I must send an email. So that means even at that level, the elderly, um, people in rural areas. So it's not just about people in urban areas anymore. Right. People in in rural areas, the message needs to spread as fast as the technology itself is spreading. All right. My second last question before we get to how people can reach to your services. Uh, I, I read somewhere where uh, this quote was very interesting. It talked about uh, what mental hygiene is not just what you eat. It's also about what you read, 
what you watch, what you write online. And then uh, later on, while I was scrolling the internet, there's this Hollywood rapper by name Kanye West, who's yeah. also a producer. He said porn ruined his life and his family and his career. And then he mentioned a certain uh, adult movie that he watched when he was so young, and he took it for the rest of his life online. He kept on checking at websites and whatnot. And, and that's literally addiction now. Now for people that are addicted to their mobile phones, constantly visiting sites, you're constantly checking on Instagram, who has texted me, who has responded, oh, this celebrity has posted this photo, blah, 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 whatnot. How can we help people that are suffering from that? And I believe it's a, it, it, it's a medical problem. It needs you know, to be treated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a condition. Um, so I, you know, and, and, and when at the beginning I said I'm a cyber psychologist by profession, because I studied cyber psychology at master's level in the UK. And what cyber psychology really is all about is about understanding the effects of inappropriate use of technology on people's psychological and social well-being. Right. Um, yes, increasingly we are seeing um, incidents of uh, technology addiction. These devices, these platforms are addictive. You know, when you, when your, 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 your smartphone, you can scroll, right? Right. That is deliberately designed to keep you scrolling. And you, exactly. the more you scroll, there's always the more you fresh feed. There's always, there's always fresh feed. Right? There's always a the fresh dashboard. feed, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you are not alert to these things, you uh, might end your, uh, you might end up in a situation where you get hooked, right? right? So um, in in I think in South Korea they have rehabilitation centers for gaming addicts. Right. Parents take yeah, because gaming is very addictive. You exactly. know, you buy your you buy your children. You know, Xbox, this, uh, PlayStation, this, PS4, and that. Five and PS4, the rest. 5, and the rest. <laughs> and then you're thinking, yeah, you love them. And right. then they spend the whole day, the whole night playing these games, and then they get addicted. And yeah. then at school, they don't perform because usually you will see the effects through, you know, like academic performance. You know, if it's an, uh, if it's an adult at work, they're not performing because they're spending so much time on Facebook. Even you think they're doing work, they're on right. Facebook. You know, so what we do um, as cyber psychologists is really to help people with something we call digital wellness. Right. And we're encouraging organizations to introduce, you know, uh, digital wellness programs. You know, right. help people deal with the, you know, negative effects of inappropriate use of technology, excessive use of technology. Right. Because you can become addicted, you use it excessively, and then it leads to depression, and then it leads to a whole lot of other mental, yeah. you know, uh, mental health um, uh, symptoms that right. you need to deal with. And then you can imagine, it happens with children. I mean, I have a, I have a 10 year old son, you know, I, I noticed later on that, um, you know, I bought him a, a tablet when he was like two years old. So he's been using- Pretty early. Pretty <laughs> young, you know, and then by the time he got to school, I realized that he was a slow learner. You know, I took him to a psychologist and they diagnosed him with ADHD, right? Goodness. You know, so it's really attention um, def yeah. an attention deficit disorder. You know, so yeah. when he's in class, you know, he's just, when is school coming out? I want to go home and play. I want to go home and, you know, you know, do this and that on my gadget, right? right. And then I, as I started talking about this thing, opening up and going on TV, going on radio, and then other parents coming out and say, yeah. we have the same they problem. They started plugging in. We have the same problem. Relating. I have the same yeah. problem at my house. You know, right. so these things are happening. And now, not uh, just to kids, even to adults. Yes. Personally, I, I've been addicted to Instagram until I deleted the app. I'm like, why do I keep on checking <laughs> <laughs> who is updating what and what? Yeah. And for example, those people that follow, like, uh, they're fanatics of soccer, they follow Cristiano Ronaldo. You're always checking, where is he hanging out next? Or yeah. uh, a Kenyan, you know, socialite or influencer, you're always checking. Or maybe somebody you're competing with professionally, and yeah. it's giving you pressure to keep up. Absolutely. And you, right. know, how, and how, you know how you tell that you know, this thing is affecting me somehow. Right. When you don't have your phone, you know, you become restless, you know? Right. There's anxiety, so it leads to anxiety. You become um, anxious, you know, you want to check as quick as possible. And then if that doesn't happen, it can actually lead to depression. Exactly. Yeah. We have so many people that have come out to admit that they ended up in depression because of the way they were using technology. Right. So appropriate use of, what is appropriate use of, you know, the internet and technology? You know, you limit it, you control it. You know, okay, I'm going to go, you know, for 10, 15 minutes, then I'm going to do something else. I'm going to grab a book. I'm going to go out. I'm going to work out my garden. I'm going to do this, you know, keeping yourself busy, right. you know, and, and even children, you know, at yeah. home as an adult, making sure that you give them chores in the house right. that can take them away from 
yeah, their the devices, internet, you, know, you know, go out. <laughs> the thing, and, and the reason I was saying, you know, as parents now, yeah. we are demanded to, to do more. Go out, play soccer with them, you know? Yeah, I don't get remember, engaged. I don't remember yeah. my dad going, you know. <laughs> the last time you played <laughs> soccer with your, with your kids. Yeah. yeah, you know, so yeah, these things are real, man. Yeah. These things are real. They say that we may not have, okay, in the West, in the Western world, it's worse. But, you know, people tend to say, you know what, in Africa, we're not there yet. You know, yeah. even the internet penetration is still very low. But it's I, not true. It's not true, yeah. man. These things are real. You can, yeah. you can go online with just, you know, a few, a few cents, right. you know, and, and buy data and go online. So and just access think about that adult site <laughs> and get addicted and, get addicted. and become <laughs> a victim like Kanye West. So you see, if you don't talk to your teenagers about, because now, you know, back in our days, pornography, you needed to have a VHS. VHS tape, you right. know, and, and get it and play it on TV. Right. Now, pornography, you can just, you know, access it on your phone. Right. You know, so if you have, you know, teenage boys or teenage girls at the house, you know, they can explore with these things, you know, and hide in their room and do whatever that they want to do. Right. So, which is why it's very important for us as parents to keep monitoring and making sure that we even guide our children on what to do, what not to do online. And even right. showing them that um, about the, teaching them about the negative effects. Right. It, it has reminded me of a, of, of a friend who was saying that nowadays when you lose your smartphone, it, it looks like you are out of touch with reality yes. and life, and you feel like you just can't settle. Like you can't even move ahead because if you don't have a smartphone, it feels like everything is moving so fast and you're behind schedule until you get a smartphone. That's when you feel mentally settled, which I feel like is a problem. I don't know. What's your Yes, absolutely. On that? You know, yeah. these devices are immersive. As in like, when you go in, you really go in with all your senses, <laughs> right. right? You go in with all your senses. That's why when you don't have access, it really affects you um, psychologically and you become, you know, there's a lot of anxiety that is taking place. And that's, that's basically what it is. You All know, right. um, anxiety can lead to so many uh, medical conditions, right. including depression. True, exactly. Now, as we finish up, I want you to say your call to action uh, on matter cybersecurity. What is your message to people out there? Or in other words, if you're to give a TED talk about, you know, uh, cybersecurity, just in brief, in less than a minute, what would you tell people? And then as well as if people want to access your services and get to support you or plug in on or what you're trying to disseminate out there, where can they find it and how can they get in touch with you? Uh, this is your camera. All right, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> good morning, Nairobi. Good morning, Kenya. Cybersecurity, basically, as my main message, is no longer just a matter for IT professionals. It's a matter for us all. If you have your, a digital uh, device, you have a smartphone, you go online, your children at home, they play games online, they watch videos online, they use tablets, they use smartphones. Um, cybersecurity is, is for us all. It is important uh, to ensure that we become uh, very cautious about our actions online. It is important that we teach our children online at organizations. It is important that we teach all our members of staff uh, to use the internet safely, uh, responsibly, and meaningfully. We have the African Cyber Smart Network, which is a community of cybersecurity awareness uh, specialists from different countries um, in Africa. You can find us. Um, on um, different social media platforms. We're on Facebook, the African Cyber Smart Network. We're on Twitter, um, at Afro Cyber Smart. Uh, we are also on YouTube, so you can um, check us out there. Um, if yeah, our you know, contact details are also in there, so you can send us an email uh, at info, um, info at cybersmart.org. Um, info at African, sorry, info at African Cybersmart.org. That email address again, info at africancybersmart.org. So if you have any questions, you can reach us on that email and we'll be more than happy to engage with you. Thank you. All right, uh, I feel like uh, you've given a lot and uh, if possibly uh, if anyone is staying to plug in right now, they know where to access you and what you're offering. And it's such an amazing thing to have a foreigner come to Kenya to offer, you know, some of the things that we ourselves, we should be learning right here, but you're here to help us, you know, to know. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Right. Um, Africa, we are one place. Yes, yeah. I may be coming from a different country, but when I'm in Africa, I'm home. I'm in one place, and that's right. what uh, is important. And true, true. Have you traveled overseas as well? You yes. Traveled? Oh, I've been, I've been all over the world. So, uh, UK, US, uh, Germany, right. Netherlands. Um, yes. 
Well, thank, thank you. you. Great. Next time, I'm sure we tag along. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll be more uh, than happy to. All right. You're welcome. We have been speaking to David Moepeng, who is a cyber security awareness specialist, right? I yes. Get it right? Yes. All right. Just sharing with us insights on how to be safe online as a parent, as a young adult, as a radiant adult. You know, you've definitely gotten the insights right here on Why in the Morning. And this juncture right now, we're going to take a very short break. Uh, Kalam Ival is going to be coming up next with the Thursday Vibes. Now, it's all about entertainment. So, you, you're a little bit too... We're just about to dance. <laughs> so if you have two left feet, it's time for you to do the choreo. <laughs> so, so let's take a break at 2254 channel at Brian Sokwano 1 on the hashtag Thursday Vibes. Mine's is at Brian Sokwano 1 at 2254 underscore channel on Insta. Okay? Stick around.